everybody and welcome to a Subi Shaves video with me. Uh, it's a Sunday and we're going to be using the Christie razor from 1920 to get a BVS head shave in the modern era. It's going to be fantastic. Stick around to see the tricks and tips and the hacks that are going to get this razor from your grandparents counter and some display case in an antique store to shaving. All right. It's going to be fantastic. It's worth watching. I'm telling you. We're going to be using Holy Cause uh, Tempest. It is an aquatic scent and it takes me to, to Maine. It takes me to the northernmost part of Maine where there's beaches and tide pools and dirt and earth and stormy weather. And I'm telling you, Tempest is my favorite aquatic scent thus far. After trying five or six, this is the one that sticks. This is what I go for every time. It just has all those different elements that make it interesting. We're going to be pairing that with Mammoths. hi yo or Higgy, or whatever you want to call it. I just like calling it the, the Higgy, because I think it's cute. It smells like a barber shop, and on top of Tempest, honestly, it's kind of tame. You're not going to get a ton of scent out of the Mammoth, because the Tempest is so strong. We're going to be using my good friend's um, See You In brush with the Badger Knot. My good friend sent me this. It was the first, um, yeah, I think it was the first Badger I ever even owned. And I really like this. It's soft. It's very, very smooth. It's a very nice brush. I think it's still one of my nicest brushes of all time. And we're going to be going on top of all that with the Cremo. This is Silver Water and Birch. You guys know how I do. Slick all the time, every time. Pre-shave, right? It's the your mileage may vary of all things. Some guys don't like it. I like it. So we're going to use it today. Okay. The Christie, right? You guys are like, what? Why do you do these weird oddball razors, Josh? Why, why this? Why this little razor? Why? Let me tell you, because it makes me feel good. But taking something that is considered like, you know, or like garbage, it's considered antiquated. It's off the off of the market and a, like makes me feel good taking something like that and repurposing, reusing it, making it um, function again. I like that. I get a sense of purpose when I make something that somebody else would just consider to be a paperweight usable. That's awesome. I, I enjoy the, the history of that and I enjoy the opportunity of that. So if that's you guys, maybe this will interest you. So the Christie razors, they, they were developing razors in the 20s and the 30s. They're still a company, but they're not making razors anymore. And in the 20s and the 30s, they designed some really funky razors, man. They had some that like long handles. They had some they called just, uh, they called it the rake. And it was just an open comb. You'll see them on like the King Cutter, the Dollar Ender razors, where it's just like really sharp, rakey looking uh, comb. This is a unique one. This was called their massage bar. And it was a hybrid between um, uh, open comb and a non-open comb. You see how it has that bar on the front, front of it? Kind of shaves like a weird in between. It's more comfortable for my skin than a uh, open comb, but at the same time, it kind of performs like an open comb. It's really weird, and you would actually load a blade directly on top of this, um, on top of this uh, loading mechanism, on top of the plate, and then you just slide it in. And you see those little tabs up here, guys. Sorry, see these little tabs right here. Those tabs would actually hold the blade in place. And they worked really good for holding that their style blade in place. It's just finding, and then you'd slide it in. It's just finding those blades are darn near impossible. They're expensive. And I don't really consider that um, uh, like a usable, like, right? I, I, if it, they're that difficult to come by, they may not be worth chasing for, right? And I, I for one, wouldn't want to tell people Go out and buy a Christie if you can't get the blades. So I've been experimenting with this system because yeah, it's light. I actually, like, look at the handle, guys. Look at how good the long that handle is for an antique razor. Most of them are like a three inch. That's like a solid four inch. And it's, it could be four and a half. It's really comfortable to hold in the hand. And it's like they called it very feather. Is it light like a feather? Nimble like a feather? It has, it's light enough that it does feel maneuverable, but long enough that it's comfortable in the hand. I like that for a head shave. Yeah, that's like the perfect handle for a head shaver. So what I've been doing is um, you guys have seen a bunch of videos of me recently and a lot of people don't like them. I've been told by several people they don't like them because we're taking a DE and we're 
making it work in an SE razor, even though it's not an SE blade. And I've been told by several people that it's not an SE, it's not a DE. It's some weird world. It's an in-between. It's a, it's an all blade. It becomes the all blade. Like I, I know some guys are going to be really like upset by this. Um, some people are like purists or like you can only use the one thing. Listen, that's not how I see this world. I'm just doing things that get me comfortable shaves and hopefully doing the same for you guys. And you see this and you're like, oh, I, this inspires me to try something else, right? That's all I'm trying to do here. So we're going to be using the Persona um, DE blade. And this came to me free. They set up, I actually um, signed up for their 50 or 100 blade pack um, to talk about it. You talk about it and they send you 100 blades. And Personas are ones I already use. So... I was like, yeah, do you want to send me free blades? Sure, I already talked about your stuff and the headquarters is down the street from me. So it's kind of cool. Um, these are the silver blues. I believe these are considered to be Israeli blues. They're very, very sharp. I put them on there with like the reds. They, they, they work the same for me as Persona reds. A little less smooth than the um, lab blues for me because the lab blues are just so sharp. Guys, I took it out of the paper so you could see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to cut the the blade tabs off like by like 75%. I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna cut like this much off like right here. You see how like, it's like, if you look at the front of the scissors, it, it's really hard to show. We're gonna cut to where almost that blade is. And the reason why is because it has to be able to fit inside of the, um, the little blade dock. And that blade dock is really tight. And I always tell you guys, if you're cutting these and you cut too thin or you cut too much, don't don't be too upset about it. Right? These are these are very cheap. These are five cents or something. Plus, if you don't cut enough off, you can always go back and add, cut more. But your goal is you want it to be able to sit inside of that little um, system, right? See how mine just sits right in there. Now, here's the problem, and this is what I've discovered: you cannot have a DE blade like this in that system. A, it's too thin, it won't hold tight. B, it's too wide, There's, it's too long. And so it doesn't actually close inside of the, the razor. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put it back in the paper, so you guys can see, and we're gonna snap it in the paper. Remember, we're gonna put some pressure. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know we're, just, we're putting some pressure. And if you haven't watched my videos, that's why I'm doing this, so you guys can see I'm snapping the blade to create a blade tap, to create um, blade wings. See how these have little wings? You can see how they're like raised. And that raised, what it does is it kind of acts as like a hook. And what I've been doing is I've been manufacturing uh, like a like a like a blade carrier kind of. It's kind of like a blade carrier. It's a back piece. So this is just like a blade. Like we just did that same process. This was a used blade from that same process. And all I did was cut the the um, blade off. So this is not sharp. There's no blade to this. Here's what I did. Here is what I did. I have cut three different blades, three different ones. Oh my goodness. The camera's like, but you're in focus. Um, and all three of these, I took um, more and more or less, less uh, more and more of the blade off. So you see how small the one is on the right? And why I did this, is because the more blade you remove, the more material you remove from this front edge, the more mild your shave is gonna be with the Christie. Okay, keep that in mind. So when you're making this, you have your blade, you snapped it in half, you go to cut your blade, the more blade you remove, the more mild it's gonna shave. So I have one where it's a medium shaver, I have one for an aggressive shaver, and I have one for a mild shaver. It makes it fully adjustable, depending on how much blade you cut. And today I want to, since we're doing a head shave, I don't know you guys like get on with it. I'm gonna do the medium one. I'm pretty sure this is my medium one. Um, I don't know if that helps you guys like seeing the how much blade I've removed. Let me, see, let me try to show. It's kind of a trial and error thing, you know. Test, see how it feels on the skin. But I find that to be very that amount of uh, material removed to be very medium amount. Then what you're gonna do? It's very simple, guys. Very simple, like usual. We're going to take our two blades. This is the sharp blade. This is the non-sharp blade. You're going to put them together. 
Just like that, like magic. Like shaving magic. Huh? Huh? And what you need to know is there's two sides to this now. You have the raised side with the blade carrier on bottom and the non-raised side with the carrier on top. And what you're gonna wanna do, take that the raised side with the carrier on top, right? Where it's, it's lifted, where the, the carrier is on top. And we're gonna slide it directly into our razor. And I like the system this way because you see how, because it's added, because we've added those um, curls to it, the blade just sits in there nice, like it would, would do an OEM. Then we're just gonna grab our handy dandy other piece, slide it right in. I'm gonna slide this guy right in. And I like to actually look. At where I'm uh, sliding it in so it doesn't flush. Because if you don't, that's what happens. I'm trying to do it on camera. Yeah, uh, if you don't like put it in flush, you have to have a, a shim. Guys, I did not set my shims out. I don't even know where my shims are. They're right there. Carry it around the top. I promise this is not as fiddly as I'm making it look. Okay. I just wanted to get like three quarters of it on for you guys. So this is unlocked. You see how like the blade's sitting in there nice and flush and the, the actual massage bar is like not falling out? That is because it's actually um, holding it nice and firm. And I'm actually gonna grab a a shim to double check, All right? Because I really recommend everybody grabs a shim and, tr and make sure that their blade isn't going anywhere. There we go. Yeah, mine just needs a little bit of extra help. You see that? Here's the cool thing. You see how much persona is showing? That's like, I mean, pretty much how you would want your razor and you can adjust this uh, open comb massage bar to your liking. Like you can have more or less gap, but I actually find um, this was a designed around having a little bit to it. So that's like perfect for me. Hmm? 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 Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, this, this was really cool for me because it, it became a, Razor that I could finally use. But I like the design of it. I like the handle of it. And it was one that I, I had a hard time getting blades to load. And that's one thing I want to mention. You can load uh, an injector into this razor. You can load an injector. Uh, it's just really like, my buddy calls me. He's like, dude, just put an ejector in it and call it a day. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It took me like almost an hour to get where the blade guard and uh, the blade sat where I wanted. Like almost an hour of just uh, pushing and maneuvering and it was really, really fiddly guys, really fiddly. It was a little unsquare, it was just bothering me. A little unleveled. Huh? See this? That's perfect. That's exactly what you want with your Christie. Okay, we are way too far into this. I'm gonna start the shave. So yeah, the injector method, it worked guys. It was like, I mean, when I finally got it into the system and I got it into the razor, it shaved. The problem was is it took so much effort to get it into the freaking razor and not have it like, because those little, you know, those metal tabs that are inside of the guard, what they do is they end up putting pressure on the injector and lifting it and moving it and shifting it. So you go to slide that back there and because there's nothing um, holding the blade in the back, you just get this really un like difficult to work with blade. And I did it twice because I, I thought, okay, well, maybe the first time was a learning experience. Second time, hour, full solid hour. And I know guys are like, I don't spend two or three minutes 
fiddling around with something. Hour. Because it just wouldn't go into place for me. And I think you could get lucky. I think you could have it where the blade slides perfectly over the little metal guards and everything's hunky-dory and awesome. I didn't have that experience two times in a row and it... You guys know me. I am like the razor blade Olympic like, person, right? I'm the Olympian of, of, of fiddliness. Give me fiddly. But man, that was too fiddly. And the thing is, is the shave with the injector, as good as it was, it wasn't perfect, right? It wasn't worth the hour of work compared to the two minutes of work that it takes with this. And I like that this, right, is manipulable. You can change your um, back end of the blade and it's gonna shave differently. Right, I have one that's so aggressive and like it's like, only, it's barely just the, only the blade's been cut off. And it's, I mean, it's really aggressive. There's lots of blade fill to it. Very efficient too. And then I have this little guy the in between that I find is actually my favorite. The mild I'll use like, I don't know, my skin's been beat up pretty bad or something, but yeah, it's cool. And to use something again that like would be considered a paperweight, it would be considered a display case item. And I wanted to mention, because some of you guys are now like, ooh, it's usable? I'll get one, if you're now thinking about that. Christy has two razors that look identical. Of course they do, right? But they're not. They have one that was given as a gift to the people that displayed their knives in the early 20s. If you displayed their knives and you had, you know, they gave you one as a gift. And the gift razors, guys, the gift razors, the head cap, I'm gonna to try to show you guys, has an angle. You see how this head cap right here slants on top? I'm trying to get it like where you guys can actually, I don't know if you can see how it's slanting. It's very slight, but they also did one called the Pilot. They look the same. The Pilot is a flat slab. There's no slant. Pilot is much more mild. This, a little more aggressive. And when I say a little, it really isn't like a ton. Keep in mind, we're using the Lab Blues in the Christie, and we're just going through. And this is uh, with the Grand Pass, guys, on 14 hours of growth, 16 hours of growth. Actually, it's like 18 hours of growth. Got a late start today. Wife and I hung out late last night. She got off work late. So we slept in. You can see, holds quite a bit of soap in there. Quite a bit of soap. Yeah, here's the blade. Here's the blade, guys. Nice and nice and solid and right in place. I didn't forget the Allen, but I didn't wipe my hand on it. We're 18 minutes in, we gotta do this one fast. And like I said, these weekend shades are going to be longer. I want to use like these, like for me, they're cool, right? These like oddball razors that a lot of people wouldn't even think you could use. And I want to do on head shaves because head shaving guys, I know there's, there's people out there like, well, I don't head shave Josh. This isn't relevant. And I really mean it, man. If you can do your head guys, because of all the follicles, you ever see someone do their head, I guarantee you that razor works great on the face. You guys seeing this? It just, it, I mean, it has a little bit of blade fill, a, a bit, a tiny bit, but it's super nice and efficient. to come across on that side a little bit more. But yeah, it's it's really nice, it's really comfortable, and it's really easy to use. Um, and so we always talk on my channel. Oh, 50 of you guys that have watched this far. 50 of us guys, we're 50 strong now, 50. We're not, we're not, we're in the fives. We're halfway to triple digits. But you guys always know, I talk about the three C's, you know what I mean? I'm always like, oh, well, what, you know, cost, closeness, and comfort. Because that, for me, is what shaving is all about. 
That is the shaving serum. That is the, that is the, that is the, what I'm going for every time. And this razor, because of the way you buy them and how cheap and easily they're found, I think it's a great pickup. You can get them as low as three bucks. Cost, guys, cost, it's there. And because you can get uh, the e-blades now to work, the e-blades are nice and cheap. And closeness, I shared with this yesterday, just to be able to talk about this. Actually, this is the exact same shade yesterday. And I'm telling you, BBS all day long. And it's very comfortable on the skin. Very comfortable. That's the thing that blows me away. Is you would think something like this would be really aggressive. I don't know why. I always just think that something like this would be aggressive. Let's see these kind of things. So I'm like, ooh. All that blade gap. That weird massage bar in front. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad, honestly, guys. It's not bad at all. For me. For me, this has been an absolute little pleasure of a shave so far. And it just, it, I like it, like I said, bringing something back that otherwise would have very little use. I went antique shopping and the lady comes up from the store and she goes, you know, what, what are you looking for? I'm like, oh, you know, just old, you know, antique shave stuff. You got these like shave razors around. You have like a bathroom section I can go look at. She gave me this weird look like, why? And that's that's kind of sad to me that you know that's that's the view on the world. You know they're old and they had pro, uh, proprietary blades and a lot of people don't think they can be used anymore. And that's what my channel is all about: getting oddball razors some life. You guys see this? You see all that junk back there? What we're doing? What we're doing? Yeah, I think today all we're going to do is a, um, a head shave on camera, partially because um, time, you know what I mean? I think that it's going to be more beneficial for you guys to see the head shave, but also because I'm dealing with uh, this camera and learning some of its quirks. I had it um, actually overheat yesterday. Which is part of the reason I, st I I didn't film. It just it was overheating. And when it overheats, it turns off, which is just asinine to me. But yeah, I'm telling you, this is fantastic. The soap smells so good. My skin is could not be happier. And on top of that, guys, I'm just gonna go and do one little cleanup pass. This is gonna be a nice three pass. I mean, honestly, very. Three true passes, kind of razor, with the mild or the medium blade setup, and I'm using a pretty sharp blade. Right, the personas are known for being pretty darn sharp. So you, if you like, if you build your blade carrier, and you're like, oh, this is so cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have a bunch of used blades, right? I can just go cut the blades off and just go to town. Exactly what I did. I had used blades, just cut them off. It cost me no money. It was something I had laying around. If you're gonna do that, um, the one thing you need to know is you can adjust blade aggressiveness, right? If you accidentally make it too long and it's like more aggressive, you can adjust your aggressiveness by just chasing blades. You know, maybe your blade choice is a little more uh, aggressive. Like if I was using, um, like for instance, like the Lab Blues from Persona, I would definitely go with the mild 
blade carrier that I built or cut, built. I didn't build anything, <laughs> just cut it. I would definitely go with a more mild blade carrier. Man, this is sweet. Whew. Ooh. Circa 1920, 100 years old and still shaves, still shaves. And for anybody out there that's like, <clears throat> watch this long and you guys are like, Josh, does the massage bar really shave different? Is it, is it different? Does it feel unique? It does. 100% feels unique, feels very, um, it's, it's strange feeling. It definitely has an open comb glide. Like you're like, okay, if I can feel the open comb gliding, but at the same time, it doesn't have the scratchiness of an open comb. If you push down. So I'd say this is like the hybrid is actually nice for somebody that's like coming into close comb. Or if you want to try to experience a close comb without having really bad cat scratches from pressing. And I know a lot of you guys don't understand that you're like, I've never had a cat scratch from an open comb. Well, you guys are probably using ones that were either manufactured really well or newer, newer open combs. Because what happened is back in the Dizay, Back in the 20s, man, the King Cutter and the Dollar Razor and all those, they were making these ones. I kid you not, I have one over there in the closet that's sharp. I can't run my finger across the open comb. It's so sharp. And um, it would, if I pressed down, I, it would cut me. The comb would. I wouldn't even have to have a blade in there to get a cut. Um... And so I think like this is a nice entrance. Like I think that's probably where their market was, was a nice entrance for people that weren't super adept in the open comb experience. Oh, so good. Just being picky because it's Sunday and I can. Because it's fun to go, you know, buff the areas. Oh, that's it. That's all she wrote, guys. That's it. It's, it could have been done five minutes ago. Right? There's no... There's no hair anywhere. Mm. No cuts. No dings. No irritation. Whatsoever. Easy way to line up the beard, too, here. Really easy way to line up the beard. Whiz with this, Christy. Like I said, if you can shave your head, everything else is easy mode. Guys, this has been a Super Shaves video. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for coming in and joining me for a little uh, experimentation, a little razor workshop. It's awesome to have you guys in my corner. I know that these videos, um, they tend to rile up some feelings from a lot of different groups, right? The SE groups don't like that I'm using a DE blade. And the DE guys don't like that I'm putting their blades in antique SEs. This this really irritates a lot of people apparently, and I didn't know that. I just, I, I like using what works and I like bringing things back that you couldn't use, you know what I mean? This is the mammoth. And yeah, it makes me happy. It makes me feel good inside knowing that we have uh, resurrected something, right? Brought something back that otherwise wouldn't be used. I hope that this inspires you guys to look at your cabinet and say, oh, maybe Subi's right. Maybe I have this and this and this. And I could do it, you know, I could make it work differently. That's all I hope for. Guys, have a great Sunday. Have an awesome, awesome time um, getting ready for the work week, and we'll be we'll be in touch. Don't worry, I've got cool stuff coming out. Bye.